Hi everyone, so for the Excel part of this, we're back in this spreadsheet here, Bateman 1988 TIC Trace Reduced. And we're gonna make use of some of the stuff that we discussed here in the isotope lecture with respect to rubidium and strontium. So the first thing I wanna do is we're, I wanna transfer this number here, 1.3981 times 10 to the minus 11. So I'm just gonna come over here yeah, we use the, well, these are the trace elements here. Here's strontium 87, 86, the isotopic ratios. Um, so we're going to be using those. So somewhere close to there, we're going to write K constant and it is equal to 1.3981, if I've remembered it correctly, times 10 to the minus 11, and the units are in 1 over Y or per year, 1.3981, yeah, 1.3981. So remember at the end of this lecture, we found that time is equal to the natural log of m plus one divided by lambda. So we're gonna use Excel to figure out this m, the slope. And we're gonna do that by taking advantage of this equation here, y is equal to mx plus b. Remember, this is our y, and this is our x. So let's come back into the spreadsheet. So here's rubidium, and here's strontium. So our x value, uh, I'm gonna place on the left side of rubidium, of the strontium isotopic ratios. So rubidium strontium is equal to rubidium divided by strontium. Now this doesn't say rubidium 87, but it effectively is. Uh, it's the most abundant form. And then strontium over here is our, uh, our uh, proxy for strontium 86, even though it's really the total of 86 plus 87. And we can fill down for all of our cells. Notice there's not isotopic data for all the samples. Let's just take the top few here and I'm gonna graph this. So we will, after selecting these, we'll insert a chart, always the XY chart. And then so we can see what we're doing, we'll add titles, add a primary, vertical and horizontal axis. This is rubidium strontium, and this is we usually abbreviate this as 8786, but here I, it's probably best for us to write it out. This is 87 strontium and 86 strontium. And we'll make the font much better so you can see this more clearly. So we're plotting Rubidium uh, 8786 strontium, so that's our y-axis, as we saw over here, so that's y. This is our x-axis, rubidium over strontium, without the isotopic labels. So now the question is, I'm going to get rid of the chart title, we don't need that, we get a little bit more space in our chart. How do we get the slope? Well, if we select on the data, select the chart and then click on the data, we can go to chart design, add chart element, trend line. Now we're gonna add a line, so we'll just choose linear, but we also wanna come back here and choose more trend line options. So notice that the line was inserted. We want to display the equation on the chart, and there it is. And I'm going to take that equation, go back to the home, page and enlarge the text so we can see a little bit a little bit better. So this is our y is equal to mx plus b. So this is our m. And so it's giving us the equation of a line in a traditional form. So m, the slope, is equal to 0 0.0036. So the age, t, will be equal to the natural log, which we write as ln, of the slope plus one 
And then that entire quantity is divided by the decay constant here. And so that is the age, and the unit is years. Now, it's a little bit more convenient to show ages in millions of years. So we can write age in MA for millions of years, and that will be equal to this number divided by 10 to the 6, or a million. And so the age that we get is 257 million years, or 257.03. Now, I'll tell you ahead of time, if you don't already know, the rocks in the... Uh, this part of the Sierra Nevada, the Tuolumne Intrusive Complex, are much younger. They're close to about 80 to 90 million years old. They're no older than 95. So there's a, look at all this scatter here. What you're going to do for an exercise is I want you to look at the individual units here. So if you come all the way over to the left, if you select all the rows and go to Data Sort and Sort on Column B, you'll get all of the units sorted according to their type. I'd like you to look at the ages for the Cathedral Peak, Glen Allen, Half Dome, Echogranular, and see if any match what we know to be from zircon age dates to be in the range of uh, about 95 to 80 million years. Can you can, do any of them yield values that are close to that. And the fact is, I have not done this test yet, so I don't know what the result will be. But we'll find out together. I'll let you find out first. And then we'll look at why the ages for at least some of these units are too high by doing a different set of modeling, a different kind of um, uh, set of calculations. And we'll see that probably on Wednesday. I think this is enough to get you started for today.